Kenji, wait. my cursed, shriveled up soul has been able to produce a tear. But this film managed to turn the taps on. It did. Oh yes, roll up and be mesmerised by the emotionless void. Hi guys, welcome to a video and in today's video I just wanted to review the 2022 film Valley of a Thousand Hills. Now, I have spoken about this film before briefly on this channel but I just wanted to give it a more extensive review because I was both so impressed impressed and yet so traumatised by it. So if you're not familiar with Valley of a Thousand Hills, it's about a young woman who comes from a conservative village who must choose between living a lie and staying the perfect Zulu daughter or risking her life for true love. I should give a disclaimer that this film contains depictions of sexual violence and quite extreme homophobia. So I think that's something to be aware of before watching this film just in case it may impact you in a negative way. But let's get into it. So first of all, this film is so beautifully made. It's full of crisp and thoughtful cinematography. And in fact, there's some stunning shots in this film, which are just gorgeous to behold. That combined with the scenery, the colour palette and the costume make the Valley of a Thousand Hills a real visual delight. A lot of the mise-en-scene in this film tells a story in itself, which is the result of intelligent filmmaking. And as a bonus, the acting is also incredible. Both of the leads had to embody complex characters experiencing difficult situations, which demanded a lot of emotional range, and they completely delivered. It's the same with the supporting cast, there's not one weak link. The film offers a diverse blend of energies, and it's interesting to see those energies contrasted against one another. The film focuses on the importance of women breaking free of oppressive traditions and putting their own happiness first. And it really highlights just how detrimental certain expectations of women are, and how ultimately these expectations can not only deny women their happiness and autonomy, but can also result in active harm. You can see how Nosifo is torn between doing what is expected of her and following her own heart. And I think that's quite relatable for a lot of women who reside in more traditional cultures. And it's such a relief when you see her finally just breaking free of all of those expectations which were bringing her down. I also like that the film explores lesbianism through a non-Western cultural lens. It was really interesting and refreshing to see that play out on screen. The film very much sets out to change the narrative surrounding homosexuality and the negative perceptions of it it within this particular culture, and it's bold for doing so. I think one of the most prominent scenes relating to challenging negative perceptions of homosexuality in this film is where Tenjiwa's mother, a figure who represents a more traditional way of thinking, takes Tenjiwa to a Sangoma to be quote-unquote cured, and the Sangoma basically makes it clear to the mother that there's nothing wrong with Tenjiwa or her sexuality. This scene was very very powerful and essentially hammered the message home. And I love that this film is unapologetic about reinforcing how women should put their own needs and desires first, and that there's nothing wrong with same-sex relationships. Now, as amazing as this film is, we should also talk about the ending, which is a little less amazing and did cause me emotional trauma. It did. The worst thing about the ending is how it gives you a glimpse of the happiness happiness and life. Nosifo and Tenjiwa could have had together in that house, and then they just violently rip it away in the worst possible way imaginable. It sent me over the edge when Nosifo was talking to the ghost, or her imagined ghost of Tenjiwa, and then when she took her own life on top of that, I mean, I was just ready to throw hands. I was. It's so awful, but the thing is, from a Western perspective, that ending can seem unnecessarily brutal. But I think the film's goal with that 
ending was to garner the maximum amount of sympathy possible for same-sex relationships and highlight the brutality of homophobia, which is what a lot of early Western lesbian cinema also did, because that has more of an impact on a general audience, which allows them to sympathise with same-sex relationships and recognise how destructive homophobic attitudes can be. And that's unfortunately what is necessary when you're trying to change people's minds inside an already existing homophobic culture. Overall, I think this film is incredible and I can highly recommend it, especially if you like being emotionally scarred. Oh yes. Okay guys, if you've seen Valley of a Thousand Hills, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments section below. If you're a lesbian, if you're a woman who would risk it all for another woman, come and join the Suffolk Underground Club. Just come and join it. You will be supporting women's voices and lesbianism. I can't think of a better way to spend your hard-earned capital than on those two things, especially the latter. Okay, don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!